Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, this is the second video in module two that where we're going to talk about and demonstrate how to create a user interface with uh, QT5 uh, and QT Designer. So, I've got the textbook showing here. This is chapter one of the textbook and that's where I need to make a couple things uh, clear. The textbook here in chapter one you will see talks about using the PYUIC5 program to convert your UI files before importing them into a Python program. You don't have to do that step if you do uh, if you use the the GUI templates that I have provided you they have the load UI code in there but just so you understand where they're gonna be telling you about that in the textbook I'm gonna show you the pages uh, at least he does this over and over um, throughout the whole book but I want to show you the parts that you can ignore so let's go to where he's talking about how to use it here or how to do it in the PDF there's a screenshot of QT designer that we're gonna see here in just a moment right here is where he's showing using the PY UIC 5 uh, uh, program and you'll notice he's providing a UI file to it and this dash O is telling it to write out Python code so what this little utility does is it takes the UI file that you've designed it generates Python code from it well that's all that you can then import into your program well that's all fine and good but every time you make a change to your UI file you have to go back and do this process all again it gets pretty pretty time consuming and pretty aggravating to have to go uh, back and rerun and remember to rerun this because if you don't you're still working against the old version of your UI file so uh, what I have discovered with the load UI command is you can have your Python code just load the UI file directly and you don't have to go through this step remember to do this step and all that so it basically means that uh, we can save ourselves some work here's where he's in the textbook right here this line it says from demo line edit import star that's where he's importing this Python code here that was generated by running this command so we won't be doing that we'll just have one line of code um, that takes care of that without having to, to do this other uh, work so let's switch over to the QT designer program here uh, before I do that let me go back to impress for just a second uh, impress is the Linux and uh, open source version of PowerPoint and I want to remind you of where we are in this program creation process we're gonna be doing this left hand side stuff we're gonna make our UI file uh, with QT designer okay the sec the third video that I, I make will be actually using Tani and working with some Python source code okay here comes QT designer so I'm gonna I've already downloaded the uh, the GUI template 
so um, I'm going to go out there and open that uh, GUI template file and then we'll save it as the correct name. There's the GUI, what the GUI template file looks like when you open it up. You'll notice that this is our form here and we have an I've already put a exit push button on there because that's a pretty common thing uh, that you have on most user interfaces so I'm in QT designer I've opened up uh, GUI underscore template dot UI I'm gonna go to file come down save as and I'm gonna save this as uh, some underscore demo it's always uh, good to use an underscore in the names uh, just because Python accepts underscores if you use dashes you can get into some trouble sometimes uh, so you'll notice me using the underscore name uh, convention a lot okay so I just saved that GUI template as sum underscore demo dot UI here in QT designer and you can see nothing really changed except for it's showing the new name here so let's put some additional widgets on our user interface so over here on our left hand side you'll notice it says widget box and what I'm looking for right now is something called a line edit and it's in the the input widgets section which is right here input widgets so to add that to our user interface you can just drag and drop so here's the line edit I click on that and hold it hold the button down drag it over here and let go and you'll notice in my object inspector window I now have a widget that's named line edit and it's a, a Q line edit class you remember from uh, module one about objects these are all objects so now we've got this line edit a line edit is similar to a text box if you've used any um, uh, languages that that use text boxes they just call it a line edit here in QT I'm gonna go over here to the object inspector and I'm gonna rename this so I'm gonna double click or triple click on line edit and you'll see how I clicked until I have the vertical bar flashing there and I leave line edit there so that we know what kind of object this is but I'm gonna add num1 okay now important don't just click off of this especially on Windows you'll run into some times uh, or at least we did in the classroom where uh, it didn't take the changes so once you've typed something in here and that vertical bar is flashing hit the enter key very important thing that we discovered it doesn't always pick up your changes if you don't hit the enter key so I'm gonna hit the enter key and you'll notice I now have it renamed this object is now renamed line edit num1 okay so now I'm gonna just add another line edit I'm gonna drag it over from the the widget box let go when I have it where I want it you'll notice it named that one line edit so I'm gonna repeat what I just did I'm gonna triple click until I get the vertical bar flashing there and the line edit stuff is not highlighted and I'm gonna name this one num2 and I'm gonna be careful and hit the enter key 
So now I have line edit num1, which is here, line edit num2, which is there. And let's put a label on the with on the uh, UI. So line edits let you key things in, and of course they can show things too. But if you have something that basically all you want to do is show it to the user, you don't want folks to be able to key stuff in on top of it, then a label is a nice uh, widget to do that. So dragging that text label widget over, that, drug that, and you can see that it has my sizing handles there and it's got the text in it. So let's go ahead and name that one. I'm going to triple click and I'm going to call it label sum and I'm going to hit enter. Okay. So now I'm going to hit my save button. Uh, it's always a good idea to save things uh, periodically in case the power were to go off or something. So just reviewing, we have line edit num1, line edit num2. We have a text label here. Just to uh, show you some concepts with this, I'm going to set some properties and also talk about the inheritance stuff that we learned in module one. This property window here in QT Designer is showing you the complete inheritance chain for all of our widgets. The very highest level parent that we have is something called Q object. Q widget inherits everything from Q object. If we scroll down, QFrame inherits everything from QWidget and QObject. So you can see there's a lot of inheritance going on. And finally, we get down here to QLabel. And QLabel is inheriting everything from QFrame and is inheriting everything from QWidget and is inheriting everything from Q object. So just trying to help you understand what's going on here in this property window. So I want to change some things about the way my label looks. So I'm going to edit some of the properties in Q frame here. So where it says frame shape, if I click in that window, I'm going to change it to wind panel. Did you see it change there? Okay, next I'm going to change the frame shadow property to sunken. Okay, now we have a nice little sunken label here. See what it looks like when I click off of it? Okay, so I clicked back on it so that my properties were actually for the label again. And we've renamed it label sum. I'm going to take the text out of it. The text that's showing right here in the text property is what shows in the widget. So I'm just backspacing that out. And when I click off of it, you'll notice that now I have an empty uh, sunken label. Okay. So we could add a couple more labels on here just to describe what uh, so that when someone's using our program, they know kind of what's going on. So these, we don't necessarily have to change their names if you're not using them in code. So these things that are just for information purposes, we can just drag them over there and set their text properties to say uh, first number Okay, and I'll make that a little bit bigger so that everything shows. Okay, so I have first number. I'll drag another label up here, and I'll set the text on it to be second number. And we'll probably have to move some stuff around here. Yeah, I think what I want to do is I want to move... 
uh, these things over a little bit so that I have room. So I'm just grabbing them and moving them over and resizing them a little bit. And so right here, I'm going to make that big enough to show everything. Okay, so I have first number, second number, and here's going to be, um, let's put our label here for sum. Okay, we'll change the text on that label to say Okay, sum of two nums. Okay, let's see if we can fit all that in without having to move things too much. Looks like I need to go left or right just a little bit more. Okay, so we're almost done with this UI. You notice I didn't rename the ones that I'm not going to use in code. There's no purpose in that. And you'll see, what did it name them? It named them label, label 2, label 3. Okay, here's the one that we're going to use in our code, in our Python code. And of course, we're going to use these line edits in our Python code because we have to get to what they're uh, keying in. So now that we've got that, we need one more thing. We need a push button. So in the button section of the widget box over here on the left, you'll notice I can drag a push button over and I can resize it a little bit using these dots that are my sizing handles. And Let's go ahead and change the name of that uh, to say push button calc. So I triple clicked on it until I got everything unhighlighted and a vertical bar. And I just renamed it push button calc. And I'm going to hit enter. Okay. So now that is named. If you move things around, you can see what it's named. Okay. I want the text that's showing there in the push button to say, uh, how about calc sum? How's that? Okay. All right. So we've got our label sum right here we've got line edit num1 line edit num2 and we've got a push button called calc sum excuse me a push button named push button calc okay so i'll save this ui file one more time and we're done with our ui design so next we'll create a python program to use this ui and you'll actually see it work here in a moment. So stay tuned for the next video uh, for Module 2 that's showing how to modify that GUI template.py file into our sum underscore demo.py that's going to read this UI file in without having to run that program that's described in your textbook. Okay, see you in a moment.